Lynn's Kitchen. And I'm happy to have with me today a lady who has some awesome pets of her own, but she also has a very interesting job. This is Melissa Kilgore, and she was with Farmers Insurance. Hi, Hi how are you? Glad um, to have you. I'm very I'm, excited to be here. Yeah, Thank you so I'm so much. excited to have you with me. Um, love the fact that you've got your own pets and that all of that plays into what you do, right. which is Farmers Insurance sells pet insurance. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit later in an interview, but in the meantime, we're going to cook a little something. How about that? Sounds great. All right. now. As we were talking, you have one little fur baby. What's his name? His name is Ozzy. Oh, tell and us a little bit about him. So Ozzy is a miniature schnauzer, okay. and he just turned eight, and he's definitely a mama's boy. And oh, he is yeah, we have a little here. picture of him for um, inspiration. Absolutely. We moved here from Ohio about just under five years ago, and so as you can see, even Ozzy's turned country. Oh, he's got hat. his cowboy <laughs> hat on in his picture and so, everything. Yeah, he's yes. just so cute. Bless his heart. Yes. Well, so being an older, schnauzers have certain dietary issues. Sometimes they have skin allergies. Absolutely. That's a thing that they have a Absolutely. lot. And then, of course, being eight, he's starting to get a little bit older. Yes. And um, is he having any arthritis type issues? Anything At this that point, you know? not. He's incredibly healthy. Um, I've made it a part of my part of a, being a pet parent to provide him with a good diet. He gets a lot of things that we're going to be cooking here today, Perfect. lots of fruits and vegetables. So I've always incorporated um, a healthy diet on top of kibble. Um, right, you know. right. Somebody after my own heart. That's yeah. kind of how we all started. So that's why I love having her with me. So we speak the same language Absolutely. and everything. And the thing about the kibble, we're going to talk about that here in a little bit, why, why that is important or other ways that you can go if you even choose not to have kibble. So as I was thinking, I thought, okay, well, a little bit, getting a little bit older, having some skin issues, what might be a good thing? And you mentioned that you do feed chicken mm -hmm. and yes. vegetables. Absolutely. So I thought, okay, chicken, vegetable, stir fry. And the first thing you think of when you think of that is you think monosodium glutamate. <laughs> For some reason, that's the first thing in Chinese Absolutely. food, you know, that comes to mind. You think, oh, I can't feed that to my pet. Well, no, and you shouldn't eat it either. So this is kind of a homemade way to do that, to introduce some flavors for you, but how you can then incorporate what you're cooking for Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Okay, the first thing, everybody does stir fry differently. Um, some like to just kind of throw it all together at one time. Others are more like me. I like to make sure that everything is cooked. And I like to make sure that, <laughs> I and, yes, well, you know, sometimes things are a little crunchier sure. or whatever. And, and I, I have a thing that I want my flavors infused into each portion of what I cook. And sometimes when you kind of throw it all together, it, it's all over, but it's not maybe necessarily infused. Okay. And especially important when you are sharing with your pets, you want to go in stages because there's certain parts of what you eat that's perfectly fine right. when you get to seasoning and those types of things not so much Absolutely. so the first thing I'm going to start out with and I've kind of put you on the spot you get to be the cooker that okay? is fine um, is chicken and I've got just boneless skinless chicken breast and I, again very picky on on what I do mm -hmm. so I like kitchen shears. I don't know. Do you have kitchen shears? I do. Absolutely. Yes. I love it because I can get just the right size. I can decide, do I want it cubed? Do I want it in strips? Whatever <laughs> I want to do. And I like to cut off all this white stuff, you know, that makes yes. it kind of chewy yes. and, and all that kind of stuff. The, some of the skin of it. Now, there's no true skin on there, but just that little bit of, of tough stuff. So while we're doing that, let's talk about some of the other things like that you cook for your pet. And how did you get started? What made you decide that you wanted to, to feed them food? Well, our first schnauzer, Dutch, um, he was diagnosed with diabetes at the age of seven in two, let's see, 2010. Mm -hmm. And so after he was diagnosed, um, it it took him it went very quickly so I had to he stopped eating so I mm -hmm. had to do a lot of research myself you know with two small children trying to figure out how I can uh. help my dog who was suffering right, right so I did a lot of research and really chicken was the only thing he would eat Wow um, 
I had to, and it, it got to a point where I would just let him eat anything as long as he was eating. Right, um, right, But right. I would have to hand feed him chicken, and so mm -hmm. unfortunately, um, we did everything we could. Um, he did still, we did have to let him go. Um, cancer was just throughout his body, so mm. when we decided to get Ozzy, I did tons of research, tons of research on everything from, you know, raw diet to cooking at home, and it became very overwhelming to me, mm -hmm. you know, as it a can, mom. It can be. With yes. a job, you know, a lot of things that we do, I mean, sometimes I come home and I don't even know what to feed my kids, right. let alone make dinner for my Animal. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Um, simple meals like this are perfect that you can give your your pet and still feel not, that you're doing something healthy for Right, them. doing something in addition rather than just throwing a cup of kibble down exactly. on the ground exactly. and, and buying a McDonald's hamburger, you right. know, and rolling on. Yes. Absolutely. And that's just kind of basically the primary goal of Best Friends Kitchen mm -hmm. is to say, here's some tools. We're showing you some things like you Don't did. Don't overthink it. Just right. Don't overthink it. Do a little research. Mm -hmm. Go out there, as long as you know what they cannot have, Correct. then it's an open door right. to what they can have because being an omnivore, which a dog is, they're more open and capable of eating the things that we eat. Mm -hmm. So it does make it a whole lot easier. It's just training them, especially if, they, if you don't catch them when they're a puppy. Um, transitioning, you know, they say, well, dogs will eat anything. To a degree, sure. they will. Um, but... Sometimes they don't. They're just not used to vegetables or, or anything crunchy, anything raw. So that takes a little bit of time Absolutely. to incorporate that. But yeah. Ozzy learned very young that he liked yes. just about everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and if you're eating it, so much yes. of the time it's if you're eating, then they want to eat sure. it. They want to try it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I just am so glad to have you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's what got me into um, really wanting to learn more about how to cook healthy, well, cook healthier for myself also. For everybody, <laughs> right. And do it economically. Sure, absolutely. Um, and I'm that sure. was another thing, you know, it can get very costly, especially if you're buying um, special kinds of meats the, and the things high, like that. Right, and the higher quality pet foods that you go to buy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a 15 pound bag, $42. Yeah, it's well, how long is that 15 pounds going to last you? And, and you will find out, even on a higher quality food, they tend to eat more kibble than they do of the, the food that you are preparing for them. I don't know if it has to do with metabolizing, it just has to do with a lot of things and you're meeting those needs. Now they are, kibble does one thing that's very important and I don't know if you came across this or not um, and we'll talk about that. Let's go ahead and get this started. Sure. I, I wanted to show you what I do. I like to mix, they, they talk about healthy oils these days and of course most of them you don't have too many of the really polyunsaturated, you know, right. the higher things, but there are some that are better than others. Um, I like to use, depending on how I'm cooking, olive oil is a standard for sure. me. I like to use that a lot. If you're doing a stir fry, you could actually use safflower oil. Mm -hmm. Safflower has like a, a higher tolerance for the heat. Mm -hmm. So if you're really stir frying and you're right. one of those that likes to get the walk and go blah, 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 you know, like that, you can get it smoking really bad if oh, you don't yeah. use the right kind of oil. So that's a good thing, but olive oil tolerates pretty well. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of olive oil in here. Do you ever use coconut oil? I do use I'm coconut oil. I'm a huge fan of coconut yes. oil. Yes. I use that a lot. And you, that's a taste that some people can taste, others cannot. Mm -hmm. So you have to know, do I like that? Like right. in this, it would be a great addition. Mm -hmm. It would be a great thing. There's other things that you might cook it with and you can taste that mm -hmm. too much. Right. So, but as far as healthy, mm -hmm. healthy, Phenomenal. healthy. Oh yeah, uh, even just taking the coconut oil and rubbing it on your skin or on your dog's skin, Excellent. on their tummies, Absolutely. you know, and everything like that. So it's a, it's a good all around type thing. I also add, and this is butter. This is not margarine mm -hmm. and it's unsalted true butter. And I use that only because it adds color. You know, when you caramelize with anything with butter, how it helps to make things brown. Mm -hmm. That's why I do it. Yeah, I think it has a little bit of flavor, but I just kind of like the, the color that it gives. Mm -hmm. All right, I cubed this, cut off all of the stuff I didn't like, and I'm just putting it on in. And if you want to stir a little bit, I'll turn our heat down now. You just kind of stir. And as we're going, let's talk a little bit about the kibble, like we yes. were, were saying and what you can do. The kibble 
these days, um, pet foods have come a long way. Yeah. I mean, for for many years, why right after uh, um, the recalls came out and everything, I, I guess it was concerned pet parents decided we've got to make a change. Right. We've got to have a voice in what's coming right. to us. So the pet com pet food companies have made strides. They are much better. They're much better on what the ingredients that they have with the cleanliness of it, those types of things. The first ingredients is a major... Yes, to some degree. Now, mm -hmm. that they're trying to make them hold at that. There, mm -hmm. it, there is no true, true FDA regulation right. on pet food like there is on our food. So should you be going into buying something a long time ago, they didn't even have to ch stay if they said it was chicken, but pork was less expensive when right. they went to do it. They could actually use pork and never have to tell you that they substituted it. Now, they have to at least say they can't be pulling that stuff. So you can feel better about it, but you still, when, you, when we buy prepared foods, what's the difference in going out and buying canned chicken versus buying chicken and preparing sure. it yourself? Sure. Makes a big difference. So that's another reason why we like to cook for our pets. We know down to the detail. Right. We don't have to worry about additives. A lot of times our dogs are allergic to the additives in the commercial pet foods. It's processed. Sure. And so you have to have additives. You have to have preservatives or that food's not going to last that long. Right. Even the, the fresh pet and things that you buy in the store, mm -hmm. that has a long shelf life. Like you can buy it and it's good for three or four months. What we cook is not good for three or four months, no matter what you do, right. because there's no preservatives right. in it. So those are things to think about. A lot of times you may say, oh, my pet is allergic to grain, mm -hmm. or um, they're, they're allergic to chicken, or something like that. Many times you don't know that that's the truth until you do what's called an elimination diet. Mm -hmm. And your vet can do it, or you can do it for yourself. If you suspect that my dog's allergic to chicken, well, the best way to prove that is cook a little chicken. Right. Give it 48 to 72 hours. If you feed it to them and there is no reaction, then you know it's really not chicken. It was something in the type of food that you purchased. Um, if you think that they're allergic to grains, piece of bread. Easiest way to find sure. that, you know, wheat bread. Give them a little bit, bit of bread. So, so many times people wind up having to pay for these really expensive pet foods, mm -hmm. thinking that they're allergic to, to one ingredient and it's really not. Mm -hmm. So let's just assume that you've done your research and you want to do some of this, but goodness knows you've got a 70 pound dog. <laughs> well, my mother has three oh over 55 pounds. So you can imagine that cooking full meals for them, is it's not, it's still more economical, but Who's got the time? Sure. So you have to think in ways of what can I do to supplement to make this a little bit healthier, but not necessarily do all of it. And as you mentioned, you do this and put it on top of your go-to kibble. Correct. Absolutely. So that's where I say that's the best thing yes. you can do is find out what works for your pets and then use these as supplements. Mm -hmm. Anything that you can do that's healthier mm -hmm. to add to that is perfect. If you're still using kibble, you can be sure that they're continuing to get the vitamins, vitamins. and the minerals and things that they Absolutely. need. But now you can always add, mm -hmm. you know, you can always add some yourself if you feel like they're not getting enough. If you're using like a lower grade kibble because you are, you, you know, doing this, you don't have to buy that really high quality, right. high protein because you're supplementing. But maybe you want to add a little something else. Right. B vitamins are good. Mm -hmm. the, like we talked about, the uh, salmon oil, fish oils. You can add those to your food for your pet and just feel like, you know, hey, I've, I've um, added a right. little extra ingredient exactly. here and, and helping out. That's right. So A little bit goes a long way. Yes. So we're it makes just, it not so overwhelming. Right, right. And then as you're going, that makes you think as well, what am I leaving out of my own diet? <laughs> you know, what have I not had? I'm trying to think of, of a rounded meal. You know that has so much protein and are you aware of how much they actually say protein to carbohydrates to vegetables that they they really recommend um well i know what it says on my dog food but i don't know what they actually recommend it is okay normally they're going to say 40 percent protein okay 30 percent carbohydrates so okay. you're up to 70. right so then you've got 30 to to play with mm -hmm. 
you can take that up in vegetables. Right. That's a lot of vegetables, but you've got fruits and vegetables to add in there. Or you can reassess your animal. If you have a very active animal or whatever, you can increase your protein levels a little bit, making sure that they have been to the vet and they don't have any kidney issues or anything that an increased amount of protein would bother. Right, right. Um, if they're not overweight, you could increase the carbohydrates just a little sure. bit. You know, if you don't want to have a lot of vegetables in there or you say, they're just not eating that many vegetables, mm -hmm. what can I do? Right. You know, so all of those things are very good to do. Um, baby food, have you ever tried baby food? I have. I have, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great go-to. Yeah. When you don't want, when maybe you are cheating that night yeah. and your family stopped and got pizza, yeah. you know. Oh, Absolutely. shoot, I don't have anything. Uh, they had baby food meats. Mm -hmm. There's baby food carrots, sweet, sweet potatoes. potatoes. Yes. There you go. An awesome thing to add. Where, and pumpkin. Do you use I a lot do. of pumpkin? Can of pumpkin. Yes. I always have a can of pumpkin um, in my pantry right. just to add on to a kibble just to give them. Yeah, that added, what, uh, yeah. Are you aware of the other benefits just besides the health, you know, what the fiber does? Go ahead and tell me. Okay, um, it's water soluble fiber. So that means if they're having trouble going, okay. it makes them go. If they have diarrhea, it absorbs the extra water. That's wonderful. So anytime you're noticing maybe in your changeover, you go slow, but still maybe you gave them too many vegetables or there was something that didn't quite agree with them the first time. The next time you feed them, give them some canned wonderful. pumpkin. That's a great and idea. that will definitely great tip. Yeah, take that up. All right, we are going to continue browning this chicken and when we come back, we're going to do the vegetables, talk about the vegetables and everything and incorporating everything together. Hi, my name is Melissa and this is my home away from home. Insurance can be overwhelming and confusing. Am I underinsured? Am I overinsured? What coverages do I have? What do I need? I get it. Believe me, I understand this is a lot but I can help uncomplicate this process and better help you understand what your insurance needs are. Today's consumers want simplicity. So the question is, why choose farmers and why choose me? Here at my agency, this is my staff. So when you call, you're gonna get one of us. You're gonna get a real person. It's not a call center. It's not a 1-800 number and you won't be transferred. We care. I care because I've seen the devastation that happens when a family loses everything they have and they just found out that they're not properly covered. So with farmers, we can specifically tailor your auto and home policies to specifically what you need. We can insure your motorcycles, your campers, any other toys, seasonal homes. If you own your own business, I can help you with a business policy or just a general liability policy commercial auto and workers compensation and even our fur babies which is important as well bundling saves you money so the more you bundle the more you save but the most important policy that I can ever write you is to ensure your life and the lives of your loved ones with me I'm your one-stop shop for all your insurance needs and it only takes one phone call or one email to get things started and there's never any obligation Quotes are always free. So when was the last time that you talked to your insurance agent about your coverage? Give us a call today, 615-890-8060. We can't wait to talk with you. Hi everybody, I'm Vicki Harris with Best Friends Kitchen and we're back again and we are actually still cooking some chicken. <laughs> and what I did was, during the break, I added a little bit of chicken broth, and I think we're just about ready to take that out. As I talked about, I like each portion of my ingredients to be seasoned well, so I wanted to cook the chicken separately, make sure that it was good and done, and had a lot of flavor in it. So if you want to, just go ahead and start taking that out. And we're gonna start talking about, while she's doing that, the vegetables that go in this. Now there's controversy all up and down, depending on when you go online and you look at foods that your pets should eat. There are some common ones that everybody says that they should not eat. And so those are things like chocolate, raisins, mm -hmm. grapes, artificial sweeteners, raw bones, 
Uh, can you think of anything else that you've heard that you onions, onions, um, garlic? Garlic is actually okay if you in look small in some amounts, in small think, amounts. Correct, yeah, right. They used to put it as a flavor additive mm -hmm. in commercial pet food. Mm -hmm. If you remember, sometimes you'd smell that smell and think, is that garlic? Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh -huh. It sure was. Um, there's a up and down the board controversy, and it's not uh, about avocado, and it's not the meat, the fruit mm -hmm. part, it's the pit. Uh, so when you go online and you see avocado listed among things that they shouldn't eat, well, it's only because kind of like raisins and grapes, and I'm going to address that because, I, and even chocolate. I don't know how many of you who have pets have had them accidentally eat chocolate, sure. eat candy, get into the raisin bread. I had a dog eat a whole loaf of raisin bread. I thought, they're going to die. Right. That's it. They're going to die. Or the cat that ate the chocolate, you know. Those are things that not, are not necessarily poisonous if your pet is healthy. But you can't talk to them. And if, if your pets are healthy and they're not going once a year for checkups or anything like that, you may miss the fact that they have low kidney function. Right. Well, if they do, a grape or a raisin is going to be a problem. Absolutely. Um, if they have bowel issues or anything like that and they eat chocolate, they can get too much right. depending on what's there. They can get so sick that it causes other issues. Those are types of things don't just come unhinged if they accidentally get a grape right. or a raisin right. or a piece of chocolate. Watch them. Doesn't mean that they have to be rushed, but if you see adverse, vomiting, diarrhea, lethargy, anything like that, of course, rush them in. But watch them. Just watch, you know, for a little while, because it doesn't take very long sure. for that to, for the effects to start. So that's something I always wanted to tell everybody. Don't just freak out because you're thinking, well, now I've left them in the kitchen and I was cooking and I put that in, it fell on the floor, <laughs> you know, and I've killed my pet. I know. You know <laughs> We've you, all been there. Right. So, to, you know, kind of ease up on that. And if you are an avocado eater, mm -hmm. which I love them, Absolutely. love guacamole and everything like that, um, try it. Be vigilant. Make sure, because an avocado is a superfood. If you were on an island and you had avocado and water, you would have all that you needed to survive, yeah. really. Mm -hmm. So think about that. If they will eat it, what a great addition, you know, omega-3s, everything that they need. So be sure, you know, kind of think that out, and you might want to add that also. Yeah. But let's great talk idea. about some other ingredients. Oh, and the onions, same thing. If your pet accidentally gets an onion or you're cooking and they accidentally right. get it, nine times out of ten it'll make them sick. Probably not going to kill them. Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to probably wish you were, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, once that happens. But um, just watch them. Be very vigilant. It's something you don't want to give them and they don't need it. Their taste buds are different than ours anyway. Right. You know, they're not, where's my salt and pepper? Where's my onions? You know, they're not looking for that. Right. Okay. Now, before also... Same cutting board. Make sure that you wash it after you <laughs> wash it, do your chicken. A lot of people will forget that little step. And uh, just like for us, if you're only cooking for your pets, it still matters. Raw meats carry salmonella, mm -hmm. trichinosis, all of the bacteria. So make sure that you wash anything that touches the raw meat before you start over again. So I used my shears. I did not use a knife. All righty. Peppers. Can your pets have peppers? We said no, they cannot have onions, and so I don't give them onions. Can they have peppers? I give Ozzy peppers. Mm -hmm. They definitely can. That's one of those things that it's an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. If they haven't had it since they were young, it's got a different texture to it. They may or may not like it the first time. Doesn't mean that they won't like it forever. You have to go slow. So I'm going to just chop in a stir fry, the, the pieces don't have to be little. So I'm just kind of chopping up a little bit of pepper. And I have a dull knife. Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> Something I found that Ozzy does not like, which is not very much, is lettuce. Like, like leaf lettuce. Now he'll eat it if it's crunchy. But if it's the, the, leaf, the leaf portion, portion of it, he mm -hmm. will spit that out. Like, That's it's hilarious. just awful. Yeah, but he'll, he eats just about everything. He eats, it, and probably good? because you're eating it too, mm -hmm. they, they, they like that. Right. 
I have talked about also, you know, corn for any of us, there's not a lot of nutritional value in mm -hmm. corn, but it is in mixed vegetables. We like to have corn on the cob occasionally, right. you know, that sort of thing. So should you want to feed it to your pet, it's fine. It's okay. Um, the main thing is a little dog, textures are different for big dogs than they are for little dogs, if you'll notice. Many little dogs are much pickier to crunch, you know, right. crunchy things or right. whatever. I've told this story before. I laughed so hard at a chihuahua that I was trying to get to learn to eat their vegetables and everything. I was doing really good. I put mixed vegetables with peas and corn in, on top of their food. You ever seen a chihuahua spit? Oh, no, I've not. I mean, Patoo, oh, and that piece no. of corn just went all the way. Oh my goodness! And I said, "Well, I guess you don't like corn." Don't like yeah, corn. That's so that's funny. It is. You have to go slow and learn what they like. Just like us, they have their likes and dislikes. That's true. All right, I just kind of put all of this together because I wanted to just talk about ingredients as we went about things. This is some zucchini, that spiral zucchini that you can mm -hmm. buy now. Zucchini, great for a stir fry. We have a little bit of broccoli, broccoli cauliflower, all that's good. Now, here's a little fun ingredient. In the, mm -hmm. yeah, the little baby corns, I don't know if you, if you have ever had them or not. My children hate them. I was going to say, there's not much flavor <laughs> in them, but if you like them and you like to put it in a stir fry, sure. it's I fine. Like it. Yep, there's carrots. I have, oh, here's a good one, mushrooms. Mm. Can, can they have mushrooms? They can, especially the normal portobello ones. Now, if you're out there and you're one of those that's a mushroom, you know, aficionado, right. and you, you like to go and have all the weird ones and you, you pick them and all like that, you might just Google it and just make sure that they don't have some reason why they say that. I'm not, I, I like portobellos and that's about it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know a lot about all the other mushrooms, but if you're ever in question, Google is your best friend. So you make sure you go on there and do a little Googling. Water chestnuts, mine love them, yes, which is something I crunch, never probably, thought. I yeah. Wonder. Well, and they smell, smell like dirt. Ah! <laughs> I, mean, I know, never paid attention. They do. They that smell like so dirt. Funny. So do bean sprouts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, very you know. Very earthy. Yeah, very earthy. That's a better my way dog, to say my it dog than dog dirt. Like, yeah, my dog likes to eat dirt, which yeah. is... Go figure, yep. you know. <laughs> and then we say, hey, do you want to care? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So let's go ahead and put this, after we've talked about all of this, let's just go ahead and get everything else that I've chopped up going. And I brought this little thing around. We're in the kitchen. We're very relaxed here. But I wanted everybody to be able to see what I do. So instead of turning around and using the stove that's behind me, I just use this little guy right here and it lets everybody be able to see what we're doing and talk to you. So don't wonder why I'm using a little <laughs> extra burner here. Yeah. So um, we're trying to get it hot now so that it's going to go ahead and, and stir fry. Again, I like to season everything. <clears throat> But this is going to go to my pet, mm -hmm. so the seasoning is going to be minimal on it. At this point, there's still no things like soy sauce or teriyaki sauce or mm. any, no onions. I'm just not a big fan of onions, so I don't put them in. You could, but what you would do is go ahead and get all of that cooked, then take out what portion you want to go ahead and feed them, right. and then you go ahead and add your onions, however you want to do that. I like to add low-sodium chicken broth. It is a good flavoring. So if you think, I want to, I had one friend of mine say, you know, I decided I was just going to eat like the dogs. And so she said, I stopped seasoning everything. I stopped using only the seasoning that they could use and cooking it. She said, I lost five pounds. Oh, wow. And she said, I think it's because she used a lot of salt. Mm -hmm. She used extra sugars that she didn't need and all this kind of stuff. She said immediately, I lost five pounds. And she said, whether it was what I was thinking or not, she said, I felt better. Right. And so that kind of makes you think, we probably over season. Oh, absolutely. We do things that if we ate more like we wanted to feed our dogs, we would probably be healthier. You're exactly right. Absolutely. Yeah. I did try to cut down my, my own family's salt intake just because, you know, there's salt in a lot of food that we already eat. Exactly. And then you add it to it. And it's that processed food ooh. thing. Yep. You see me add just a little bit of butter. Again, it's not margarine, it's butter. It's flavor. So that's kind of what I'm doing is saying, let's, let's try to flavor this. That's something that's okay for our pets, but that we might enjoy too, should we not add anything to it. 
All right, now here we go, and we're coming down to the wire. Now, it's not a stir fry to me, unless it has egg in it. That's right. Yeah, so if you're allergic to eggs, you're gonna omit it, but egg is very, very good for your pets. So this is like, I like to do this. This is my fun stuff. I just don't know where I'm gonna crack this. Make sure I don't get it on you. Yay, there we go. So now we're adding egg. And when you're talking about eggs and things that makes me think breakfast, do you, how many times do you feed your dog a day? A lot. Oh, a day? Uh -huh. Twice? Twice a day. Twice a day? Mm -hmm. Very good. That's another thing that us pet parents, a long time ago, we would feed them one time a day, mm -hmm. be it before we ran out to work in the morning or when we got home at night. That made them going all day or many, many hours right. without food. Again, we thought our pets were sick or what I'm feeding them is, is bad for them. It stands really to, to reason you haven't eaten for 12, 14 hours. Right. They get acid reflux just like we do. They get empty and they bolt it down and then they have an upset stomach from just eating too fast. Right, right. So those are things now they're saying breakfast is an important meal for us and our pets so that if you could exactly. feed them, you know, something in the morning, something at night, or if you don't want to feed them in the morning because you don't want them to have to go out and go potty, you know, and, and you're gone or whatever, try to do dinner and a snack maybe before they go to bed, something that carries them a little bit longer. So go ahead and mix it all in. Yep, go ahead and mix it all together now that you feel like that it's getting good. We're coming down to the wire, everybody. It smells good. Yeah. Wish we had smell a vision. Yeah, I know. It really does. And when your pets smell that, they want to come <laughs> in the kitchen. They're going to be right there. Yeah, I was going to say, they want to <laughs> come in the kitchen and be with you, but I've had so many people, and I address this as often as I can, say, if I feed my dog, and they call it human food, and I keep trying to say, there's no such thing. <laughs> food is food. Right. Look at what's on the commercial pet foods. What are they giving them? Chicken, mm -hmm. right. peas. Right. Well, that's human food, if you want to call it that. You know, they're eating that. But if I feed them that, then they're going to want to beg. Every time they, they smell it, you know, oh, how do yeah. I stop that? Well, it's not the food. It's the pattern. Their habit. If you, every time you cook, you say, here's yours, you know, you mm -hmm. get yours in your bowl, then we're sitting down to eat. It's that repetition. They're going to know they go to their bowl to get their food. Right. They don't beg at the table. But where that came from is the only human food that they were getting came from the table. I gotcha. That's like right. Like that. So then that, then that made them beg when they right. smelled that. And it wasn't necessarily that. They just wanted, they thought that's how they got that's it. Right. That was the only that's delivery right. method they understood. Exactly. You know, so now that you can do this, Mine eat and go lay down. Let me finish my meal. That, yep. You know, I had what you had, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done. I That's ate it faster right. than you did, yeah. so I'm done, you know. And I think really that it bonds you, I mean, with your pets. Goodness knows, we work a lot. We're gone a lot. And a we lot are. of people feel like that they don't give their pets what they need. So anything that we can do, you know, to, to bring them on in yeah, and I make them feel better. I absolutely agree. Alrighty. Yes. Do you add your rice? Do you put it over rice, or do you add your rice in there? Uh, we usually just add the vegetables over the rice, but you over the do rice. However, right. I'm going to put just absolutely. a little bit because, again, I'm going to be feeding the pet. You know, so I want to have just a sure. little bit in there. Go ahead and mix that around. Heat that up, and back in goes your chicken. All right. Okay. And I usually look at that and just say, okay, well, do I want to cook it or like cook it down a little bit? Mm -hmm. And you can do that if you want. Add a little bit more of your broth. And I'm not adding a lot. I'm mm -hmm. just, you know, just a little bit for flavor. And let it simmer just so that everything kind of blends and comes together. And uh, when we come back, we're going to take a taste test and see if it tastes as good as it smells. It sure smells delicious. 2.7 million cats and dogs are euthanized in the United States in shelters every year. That means that only one in five dogs will ever find their forever family, and one in 27 cats will ever find a forever home. The chances are greatly reduced for animals like Gizmo that either through irresponsible breeding, hoarding, or neglect, they never even get the opportunity 
to find the help and the love that they so desperately deserve. I'm Vicki Harris, founder and director of Music City Animal Rescue here in Nashville, Tennessee. We are a totally volunteer 501c3 organization. That means that any abandoned, abused, or neglected animal that comes into our program will never be in a kennel. They come into a home and they live with a foster family and are socialized. All of their needs are met, which includes full vetting, immunizations, spay and neuter, and microchipping. Music City Animal Rescue needs your help. We're greatly in need of foster homes for our cats, kittens, dogs, puppies, small animals, and seniors. So if you can open your heart and home to an animal in need, please visit www.musiccityanimalrescue.com for more information. On behalf of Gizmo and myself, I'd like to thank you in advance for your support. And remember, always have your pets spayed and neutered, Keep them up to date on their vaccinations. Make sure they're microchipped. And above all, adopt. Don't shop. Hi, everybody. I'm Vicki Harris, and I'm back in the kitchen cooking chicken vegetable stir fry. Are you about ready to eat? I sure am. All right. I think what we're going to do is let's put, let's decide. Now, how much did you say Ozzy weigh? He is a, just about 18 pounds, so he's a little fella, okay. although he, he got up to about 22 pounds. Um, so Mr. Ozzy had to go on to a diet and get some exercise. Now right. he's back down to 18. Well, good deal. And this would be something that if you wanted to put your pet on a diet, this would be a good way to do it because it's really easy to, to administer how many carbs are in there mm -hmm. versus how much protein and everything and still have a good rounded thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I kind of have a, a thing, like per pounds, okay. how much they get. And it's a little bit different than what's on the back of the little commercial brand. Thing. Okay. They'll say up to 10 pounds is a fourth a cup. Okay. That's just not That's not enough. very much. No, it's not very much. And depending on what we do. So for my little under 10 pound ones, they'll get a half a cup to a little bit more. Okay. And so if you want to just do, I just kind of eyeball it. I mean, sure. you get used to, to that. So just put a little bit in there and that'll be, we'll say, we'll set that aside and we'll send that home for Ozzy because there's absolutely <laughs> nothing in there that would hurt him. So he can pick out what he wants. Yeah, tad more and he'll be rolling. He will love that. There you go. Perfect. Okay, so that's going to be Ozzy's little portion. Now here we are and we've already got some on the plate for us. Now comes in where we can really make it stir fry for what we want. Um, I have, if you like teriyaki sauce, mm -hmm or soy sauce, that killer, you know, but I do like it, unfortunately. Yes, it and we can it's a put, necessary evil sometimes. It really <laughs> is, yeah. And even the little noodles, I mean, let's give a few These to These remind me of my childhood. My mom always had those. Oh yes, mm -hmm. I love them. Mm -hmm. They gave Ozzy a few. There you go. Alrighty, well, you take a few if you want some. Thank you. And then decide what you want. Do you want teriyaki? Do you want, what would you like well, to have? I'm a soy sauce kind of girl, uh, so. Well, I'm going to switch up. Well, there you go. I'm going to put a little teriyaki on here. All right. Now, again, we're talking when you're trying to do that. We just grabbed it out of there. We didn't try to figure out, oh, okay, well, there's so much protein to so much vegetable to so much this. Right. Because Ozzy gets kibble. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not exactly sticking to that formula. Right. You can be a little more lenient when you do that as well. And uh, so let's give it a test. Okay, here we go. Tastes like Not chicken bad. stir fry. Mm -hmm. Tastes just like it. That's right. And I don't know if you can tell the difference, but it does make a difference when you season each thing. Oh, absolutely. And by seasoning it and by cooking it separately, let's just say you were going along and you hadn't yet begun to introduce vegetables or you didn't want to use a lot of rice or anything, you could stop at the chicken. Sure. I mean, for your, for your dog, you just say, okay, I've cooked the chicken. And I'm just going to give him a little chicken on top of his kibble tonight. Right, right. And then, you know, we'll do that for three or four days. If everything's good and rolling, I'll add a little bit of rice. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, you did real well with that. Let's add one vegetable. Try to go slow. Right. Don't put a lot of things because you can't isolate. If you put too many, exactly. you can't isolate what the problem is. Very similar to how we should 
do ourselves. Exactly. If we have, to or how out. we do our babies. I mean, you Absolutely. know, think about it. When they first start eating foods, they'll say they eat this food. Right. And then they go to this, and then they go to that. That way you can learn, mm -hmm. and their little bodies have time to adjust. Absolutely. Makes it makes a big difference. Well, thank you so much for being with us. I enjoyed it so much. It I was am, so much fun. Yes, I am looking forward to, after we are through eating all of this, we're going to sit down and talk about pet insurance. Now, Farmer's got a great plan, and I think all pet parents need to at least look into it because goodness knows that even though we try so hard to keep them healthy, things happen, right? and it can be very expensive. Absolutely. So I think this will be a great opportunity for everybody, and you can see that interview on Patreon Best Friends Kitchen. We also have a website, bestfriendskitchen.org, and you can email us if you have any babies that have special needs or you want to ask us a question. It's Best Friends Kitchen Music City at gmail.com. So again, I'm Vicki Harris, Best Friends Kitchen. Please join us again. Bye.